In this Power Apps video, I will showcase how to create multi select checkbox experiences in SharePoint customized forms, use the radio control or the list box control to provide the user a choice of options to select from. So let's check it out in action. We will start with creating a SharePoint list using one of the existing templates, Work Progress Tracker. I will select Use Template, give my list a name and click Create. If I create an item in this list, Category is a multi-select choice column. Progress is a single select choice column. So is Priority. Now let's customize the SharePoint list form by leveraging Power Apps. Here we get the edit form control that is connected to our SharePoint list. And we can pick the fields that we would like to add to showcase on the form experience. I will pick the priority, progress, category, and click add. This will add data cards to the form control for all the three columns that I selected. For single select choice columns like priority, the data card leverages a combo box control where the user can select a single item. Now let's try and change this experience to a radio button list where the user can see all the priority options and they can make their selection. Select the card go to advanced and unlock the card to make changes. The combo box control in this data card, if you look at its items property, it is leveraging a function called choices to grab all the choice values from my SharePoint column called priority. I will go ahead and copy this, select the combo box control and delete. This will result in some errors. We will insert a radio input control. For this radio control, the items property, I will paste the formula that I copied earlier. I can select the card, just increase its height. Now this radio control by default, the layout is vertical. There is a property called layout for the radio button control. We can change this to layout dot horizontal. And now it will stack them horizontally depending upon how much real estate is available. You can observe how it automatically wraps the choices vertically if there is not enough real estate available. Reduce the height of this radio control and I can also accordingly reduce the height of the data card. I will copy the name of my radio button control. Now let's go to these errors. I'll select this specific error. Here the formula was pointing to a control that I deleted earlier. So I'll simply go ahead and replace the name of that control with my new radio control. And for the second error, which is related to the update property of the data card, this I will replace it with my radio button dot selected. For the radio control, there is a property called default, which is currently set to empty. This we will replace with this item dot the name of my choice column, which in this case is priority dot value. If I was to preview this app, you can see how I can make a single selection in this radio list. For the progress data card, which is again a choice column single select, we can also represent this in the form of a list box control. Select the data card, unlock the data card, go to the combo box control and copy the items property formula. Delete the control for the selected data card, go to insert and add the list box control. For the items property of the list box control, I will paste the choices formula so it will list out all my choices. Here I need a little more real estate, so I will just increase 
the height of this control and the data card. I will copy the name of the list box control for the first error related to the Y property of the error message control. I will simply go and point to the new list box control that I added. And for the default property of the data card, it would be list box control dot selected. Select the list box control, go to its default property and set this to this item dot the column in SharePoint that it relates to in my case progress is the choice column dot value. The list box control allows multi selections by default. There is a property called select multiple. I will set this property to false. If I preview the app, I can make a single selection in my list box control. Let's go ahead and publish customizations that I have made to the SharePoint list form using Power Apps. Head back to my SharePoint list. Let's create another item. The form experience that lights up is the Power Apps customized form experience. Priority, we can see all the options in this radio list format. I can directly make my selection for the progress. It's a list box control. Click save and the item would be recorded in my SharePoint list. If I pick an existing item and click edit, we can see how the radio control and the list box control are maintaining the original values and the user is free to change this and the updates would be reflected in the SharePoint list. If I was to add a new column of let's say type number, I call this feedback. I will go ahead and create this column, customize the form again. I will go to integrate power apps, customize forms for the form control fields. I will add the new field, which was of type number feedback. We would like to change this experience to a radio control, more like a Likert scale, very similar to the Likert control in Microsoft forms. I'll select the data card, unlock to change its properties, select the text input control and delete for the data card. I will insert a radio control. The layout for this, I will set it to horizontal. And for the items property, it's of type number. So the array of values that I will be providing should be of type numeric. Five rating options for the user. Fix the Y property formula. And for the update property, I will leverage the radio control dot selected dot value. Don't forget to set the default property. We need to set this to this item dot the column that this control is relating to the feedback column, which is of type number. The data card, we can also make it required by simply setting its required property to true. I can do the same for any other data card experience. You can also set the default value of any of these controls. So that when the user creates a new item, it has a default value to start with. Select your control, the default value. I will set it as if my form control, which is called SharePoint form one dot mode. If the mode of the form is form mode dot new, I would like to default it to the number value three. Else, I will keep the value based upon the data coming in from the feedback column. Let's publish these changes. Let's create a new item. Plus, any data cards that were set as mandatory would require to be filled in in order for the user to submit the data in the form. I will unlock the data card. Now in Power Apps, we do have a checkbox control, which will add a single option 
but there is no multi select checkbox control experience. What we can do is we can leverage a gallery control. So, with the data card selected, if I try and insert a vertical gallery control, this control would be placed outside of the form control experience. We can select the gallery control, right click, cut, and then go to the specific data card right click and paste this now places the gallery control inside the data card experience the gallery controls layout property i will change to blank click on the pencil icon to edit the gallery in here is where we will insert the checkbox control i will place it right here on the top select the template item of the gallery so you can reduce its height. Now to get the items for the gallery control, we already have this combo box control that showcases all the choices. So I will copy the formula and for the gallery controls items property, I will paste that same formula. For the checkbox control in my gallery, the text property I will change to this item dot value. There is a property called wrap count. I can change it to let's say three to showcase three options per row or two options per row. So depending upon your choices and the real estate that's available, you can decide what fits best. The gallery height, I will reduce it to remove that white space. Select the checkbox control in the gallery and notice in my case, the width of the checkbox control is spanning across other checkboxes. So I'll just make sure the width is correctly set. The checkbox control has a property called default and this logic I will base it off my combo box control that is already available and that already handles the default logic. So I will simply copy the name of my combo box control and for the checkbox controls default property, I will use the formula this item in my combo box control dot selected items. And you can see how it matches the selections that are made in that combo box control. I'll select my combo box control, set the visible property of that control to false. I can place my gallery control next to the label of that column. For the check box control, on check, I will set a variable. I will call this where category data i will use the filter function on the gallery control dot all items where that checkbox control which in my case is called checkbox2 dot value so the condition here is filter the items of the gallery where that checkbox control is checked and i will close the formula if i select that filter condition only you can see that power apps evaluates the result of that filter criteria and from this i'm only interested in the value column so i will use the show columns function on the filter function result to only show the value column when it is creating this variable so now if i select the show columns function we can see the output is simply that value column and the same formula is what I will leverage on uncheck of the checkbox control experience. For the error message control in the data card, it is important that we set its Y property to the gallery controls positioning purely because the gallery control is what is visible to the user. And this data card has a property called update. We will change to coalesce of the variable that we created, which would be blank initially and coalesce picks the first non-blank value. The second argument that I will provide would be this item dot my multi-select choice column, which is category. This variable would be set to blank whenever this form experience is loaded because initially it should be empty. However, for SharePoint customized list forms, there is some form of caching that takes place to improve performance. 
So what we need to do here is for the SharePoint integration object, we have different formulas. One of them is on new. We need to ensure that we set that variable to blank. And the same logic I will apply to on edit. I will apply to on view, on cancel, for on save, it submits the data in the form control experience. So here, for the form control, if the data is successfully submitted, there is an on success function. This is where I will make sure I set that variable to blank. If I publish this to SharePoint, if I create a new item, you can see the multi-select checkboxes in action. I will select planning and design. This task is not started. I will click save. And we can see the values being retained in the category multi-select choice column experience. If I select this, this is in read-only mode because the form is in view mode. If I edit, I can start making changes. So let's say in this case, I remove design, include marketing and research and save. Those changes are updated. If I click a new item, all of the values reset to blank. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.